Happy Friday, seekers of the world. <laughs> How are you? I'm really good. I'm very happy to be here today. It is Friday. I am excited about it. But most importantly, I'm excited because it's the end of week three, <laughs> which has been terrible. <laughs> right? But we expected that, right? Not news. We had kind of scheduled in knowing that this was going to be a tough week. But like dumb me, like hello, of course I like had to add like stuff on top of that. Of course I couldn't just get through my normal, you know, 10 contacts a day. No, I had to heap on a whole bunch of other stuff on top of that that made this week even more difficult. <laughs> so here we are. <laughs> I, I, I've been a bit of a disaster this week, but it's okay. Like, I'm just getting through. I'm continuing to focus on where I'm going, right? And that's what I really wanted to talk about today. Because, like, like let's be honest. Life is tough. And especially for minorities and, you know, queer people, there's a whole bunch of people around us continually every single day contributing to our further marginalization while asking us to be happy about it right again tell me if i'm saying something untrue but you know especially white straight people like we we love you you but y'all are learning like as you're going like of what it's like to be surrounded by people who contribute to our marginalization and then expect us to clap for them what <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> like uh, no <laughs> no <laughs> not an option at all right and i know that we're all learning we're all learning especially about our privilege right i've had to learn a lot about my privilege as a white man uh in this country and but you know i also have the added advantage of being a minority in a different way, so I'm extra sensitive to that. To those of you who are not a minority minority, and do not experience prejudice on a regular basis and do not understand what that's like, we need you to start paying a little more attention because let me give you a few examples of what privilege looks like in my life, okay? Anyone here that I use as an example, please don't take it personally, okay? I harbor no judgment about you. I think that you're doing your life fine and that you can go out and, uh, you know, spread a lot of love like you have been, okay? But that doesn't mean that there isn't room to grow, okay? It's little things that we have to deal with and just quite frankly swallow that are very, very difficult. I mean, if you just a casual example. The woman who uh, did the photos for um, us as a family at one point in our life. Um, very close family friend. Uh, I love her a lot. I think that she is absolutely going to change the world because she's doing the most important work of all. She is raising a consciously aware child and this child is amazing. And I applaud her for that. And she is the most, you know, like pro LGBTQ plus, you know, person on the planet. And that's awesome. But that doesn't mean that once she took the photos of our family, that she wanted us to tag her in them because that would get back to her Christian church members who would see her taking photos of a gay family. That was the edge of her comfort zone in terms of being a LGBTQ plus ally. When she asked us to please not tag her in her own photos that she took of me and my family. That was her privilege. That was where her privilege ended, right? And she was no longer in the fight. She was gonna take the straight white lady approach and hide, right? Because there's lots of us who don't get to hide, ever. We don't get to hide either because of the color of our skin or who we pull up in the motel lobby with in terms of what our family looks like. I don't get to hide, but she did. And that was a choice she made. And I'll be honest, that was slightly hurtful for me because she didn't want my family represented to her Christian friends because there would be judgment there. She knew that. So she opted out. These are the little things 
that we as gay people have to deal with each and every day. Another example, like I've talked about with my sister, you know, and her privilege allows her to look at people who participate in bigotry against my family and call them good and decent and they're doing well and they shouldn't, you know, like, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? Like, are you kidding me? Do you need me to go back and read the statement that the Catholic Church recently put out about gay people? Do you need me to read that again? Because I will. And gay people, if you're watching this and you want to drive home that point, all you do is make it racist instead of homophobic and read it back to them and ask them if that's okay. Would they stick around if the comment was racist instead of homophobic? It's very clarifying. Very clarifying exercise. So we have to deal with people in our lives all the time who are like, oh no, it's fine. No, you're good. Yeah. And we're all like, it's really not good. It's really not good when you bring people into my life who I have watched cheer on political parties, political leaders who have openly said that my family is garbage or a party that writes 100% of the anti-LGBTQ plus legislation. You bring someone into my life who's cheering that on, I'm sorry. That doesn't work for me, right? But again, I get to spend my New Year's with these people who I watch cheer that stuff on and swallow it. It's a tough pill to swallow. But that's what you have to do because those are your choices as a queer person. Do you want all your family? Like, I, you know, I only have one person left in my life from my family. Like, really. And, you know, even she's tap dancing on that line of privilege, which makes me insane. She doesn't see it. I wish she would. I wish she'd care about it. I wish she'd say, you know what? I have gone and reviewed what you said. I have read the statement the Catholic Church put out about your family. And that's actually not okay. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry for thinking that those people are doing fine in the world. That they can contribute to institutionalized bigotry against your family. And I can say that they're doing okay. But... You know, you can't control others. All you can do is the best that you can do even when it is tough, right? As I have proven here, my life has often been really tough. <laughs> like, really tough, <laughs> you know? But as we evolve spiritually, we start to look at that work as extracurricular work, right? Because we are the ones lucky enough to be forged in the fire. Right? Those other people who don't have those struggles, who can't even comprehend what the right thing is to do for your community, to protect others, to make sure that the elderly are protected, those people who are so selfish, right, and can't get out of their own way because they're so ego-driven that it's about them, it's not about helping others. That's not happiness. That's not the road to happiness. But we can find the road to happiness. Why? Right? Because that's what we're doing here. So we're not here to wallow in or be sad about life and our lot in life and what's been dumped on us and all the things that we can't control. Because guess what, sweetie? <laughs> There's so much more you can control. <laughs> right? And once you start to get that, that is where the magic happens. It's like we did yesterday. Did you need me to arrange those pixels on this screen right here in order for you to experience joy? Do you need me to do that? Do you need me to arrange those pixels in order for your brain to receive the message, this is what joy feels like? Or can you remember it? Can you just remember what that felt like and dial that in at any time? Because that's where we're going. Because it's freedom that we're actually seeking here. Freedom. Freedom to not suffer the slings and arrows of this world that is so silly and quite frankly stupid at times, right? Like, it's just, there's a lot of that going around. <laughs> you know, hi, <laughs> you having fun over there with your bigotry? Yeah. <laughs> because you know, at the end of the day, that that road is not paved towards happiness because there's only one that is. And that's the road of love, right? 
and caring about other people, but that love also sometimes says no. Ask any parent, right? So it's a fine line, not being triggered by the actions of others, not being affected, not letting your personal strength, right? Your personal ability to be solid in the world be affected by others, right? I once heard, I believe there's actually a book called A Monk in the World. I love just that image. To be a monk in the world, to be so together with your energy, right? So, I have a couple exercises I want us to do. This was one that was really important in terms of me not getting my feelings hurt. Are you a person who regularly gets your feelings hurt? I think a lot of us are, especially the sensitive ones, right? Understand that our emotional energy, right, exists as we tell it to. Are you a solid container for that? Are you a solid container for your truth, your beliefs? Right? Because once you get to that place, once you get to that place where you are strong there internally and you're not being thrown off by little bits of bigotry and hate that's coming at you, right? Opinions, ooh, opinions, <laughs> that's so fun. <laughs> so how do you do that? How do you become a solid container? First of all, we're gonna be looking at relationship with self. And there's an exercise called Me 100 that I want us to do. But I think there's an exercise we need to do first, okay? Me 100 is, I mean, it's a, it's a great exercise for a Friday, right? And I kind of thought, oh, maybe I'll do that today. But I actually think that there's something else we need to do first. Me 100 is really getting in touch with who you are at your core, right? Like what's the most you that you can be? I love that exercise. Because I tell you, honey, when I got myself going on and I'm the most me that I can be, right? There's power there, right? This is the most Dale hat. This is the most Dale pair of sunglasses that I've turned into regular glasses. What? Because that's five. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And my shirt and my prayer beads, right? Non-denominational prayer beads because we wouldn't go the Catholic route, why? Because, read what they have on their website about gay people. Right? And so we go through and we learn how to choose. What are the shoes? What's the most Dale pair of shoes I can put on? Ah, uh, well, come on, bitch. <laughs> right? Those are the most Dale pair of shoes that I can put on. Those are me 100. This shirt, this shirt is me 100. My truck, my truck is me 100, right? My style, my personal choices, my belief in what I'm doing and where I'm going, that's me 100. And we're gonna be doing that, right? So start to explore just that concept because we will be doing it next week. But like I said, I think there's another exercise that we need to get done first in order to become fully integrated. Your energy and your feelings are, think of them as energetic bands, right? And we kind of drag these bands around with us wherever we go, right? They're awesome and those are our feelings, but the untrained don't have those coordinated. So when we sit down, they kind of just lay all over the floor, right? They kind of just hang out like you're a mop and all your feelings and whatever, little tendrils of energy that are just around you. And then someone comes by and they're trying to get a cup of coffee and they're going from here past you over there. And they come along and they just inadvertently step on one of your feelings, right? That you just have laying about you. 
and continue on their way. It's because you haven't worked in closing your container, right? You just have your feelings like little tendrils all around you to be stepped on at any time. We need to wrap all of that within ourselves and not be casual and loose with that, right? So in the morning, when we get up, we have to wrap ourselves with those, right? All of those feelings, emotions, whatever, right? To become that solid container, to wrap them in ourselves so that we are sitting there, people can't just casually come by and step on them. That's a you thing. That's not a them thing. Them hurting your feelings? Yeah, happens, happens all the time, right? But there are ways to address that. Have you energetically taken the steps to understand what you as a solid container feels like? Do you know when you're wrapped up, when you are solid, when you are together? I would encourage you to spend some time, even if it's just five minutes, just turn off the computer right now, right? And wrap yourself up so that you are a solid container and nobody can accidentally come by and step on your feelings, right? That's a you thing. You're in control of whether you get hurt so casually or not. And it makes me crazy when people are so wounded all the time. I mean, trust me, as evidenced by these videos, <laughs> I get my feelings hurt a lot, right? But I also know that that's my responsibility. My feelings are my responsibility. And when I get them hurt, right, that's something I have to look at. What's in there that's causing me pain? And where do I need to correct myself? That's why I love shamanism so much, right? Because it's a personal journey for one that is determined by us individually and that is chosen according to who we are and who we're supposed to be in order to complete the vibration of this planet. Because each one of us is here with a certain vibration. And if any of us are dimmed or off or broken, we interrupt the perfect harmony of the vibration of this planet. And that's, I'm hoping, where we're going. That we can restore people's souls enough so that they're not dimmed or broken or off, but that all of us are resonating in harmony with one another, helping one another, not hurting one another, right? But there's gonna be a lot of work that's gonna to need to go on between now and then because sometimes love said no. Sometimes that love says, no, you cannot belong to that bigoted group. You may not. At least not if you want to be involved in my life. I mean, go hang out with the other bigots. That's fine. But not here. Not on my island of safety. Uh-uh. So, wrapping ourselves up, right, energetically, right? I just want you to close your eyes and get still for a second, right? And then imagine all of your energy just kind of hanging around you and in you and kind of flowing in and out of you, right? Okay, now you're gonna be going into, let's say a job interview. That's a good way. You know that when you go into a job interview, you get yourself all wrapped up, you are tidied up, you are ready to present yourself. What's going on? So that's the energy that we need to kind of carry with us and not be loose with our energy field, right? Be a solid container for yourself. When you start to inhabit that, you will no longer get your feelings so easily hurt. Of course, we all do. People say hurtful things, especially inadvertently, especially our loved ones, right? But again, that's up to us. And we have to have that exercise complete and done and known in order to get through the world and I think that that's gonna be step number one. If you can, play with that exercise just a little bit. When you walk into social environments, wrap yourself up energetically and hold yourself. Hold yourself, hold yourself together, right? As a solid, solid person. There's so many exercises that I want us to go through because I have been to so many different places and I have had to find different ways in order to pull myself out of it, okay? Just try this, just try it. When you walk into, even if it's just a coffee shop, 
when you sit down, when you talk to people, when you walk into that new space where there are others, wrap yourself up, hold yourself, right? And be conscious of your energy, right? So that when people come by and talk to you, how is that flow going? Are they being an energy vampire? Are you giving away your power? Are they giving away theirs? What's going on energetically, not just in words? That's why when people of communities of faith <clears throat> do things in name only, it makes me crazy. What is that? What if, I mean, you know, like, <laughs> it makes me crazy. You know, it's like some members of our family uh, who politically, you know, are kind of on a more loving and accepting environment for gay people. However, like even they belong to a church that's so homophobic that they themselves had to go and ask the leaders to dial down the homophobia. I don't understand how you live your life in a way where you find yourself in that position. I, I, I mean, I'm just shocked. But that's like, to me, at least not even the worst part. The worst part is that they went and gave him a good finger wagging. Nope, shouldn't be talking like that. And then just went and sat back down in their pew. That was what they could do. That was, you know, fine. It's fine, it's fine. We'll just get it taken care of. Trust me, if the tables had been turned and I found myself in an environment where leaders of an organization were openly talking about bigotry against another set of fellow citizens, I wouldn't go give them a tongue, you know, just a tongue lashing, finger wagging. Uh-uh, that is not good enough. That is not good enough. That is in name only. That doesn't care. I mean, it's, it's what? What? I mean, and then you stay? <laughs> like, that's... That's your solution? <laughs> like, okay, you know, but you know, don't try and come on my island of safety with that crap. Like, uh-uh, you know, uh-uh, uh-uh, you're not, you're not getting the job done, okay? Like, good for you for saying something, but again, you know, but people are always gonna be disappointing to us, and they are, and that's just, you know, human nature. And they're always going to do these types of things. So again, we have to have exercises for us to pull ourselves together, to pull ourselves together, to discover our own joy, discover our own process for getting ourselves out of, you know, life's troubles. And that's what we're doing here above and beyond everything else. Like, oh my God, like there is so much going on right now. <laughs> like, it is ridiculous. What is really crazy to me is like, it's a really good thing that there's actually only one person in this video because like, uh, uh, like there's so much going on. <laughs> like, I, I can barely keep up. Like uh, cast of one, like nonstop. Like, uh, can I get a break? Like, <laughs> you can imagine what it's like up in here. <laughs> Actually, don't do that. <laughs> Anyhow, but you see my point. People around us are always going to be disappointing and they're never going to step up in the way that we want, especially for us queer people who, you know, just live with casual bigotry in everyone in my entire family. <laughs> you know, because if they aren't involved in the bigoted organizations themselves, they're certainly providing comfort to those who are openly harming gay people. So, you know, what do you do with that? What do you do with that, right? But again, that's why we're here because it's us to, up to us to be responsible for ourselves, for our own level of joy in our lives, right? For our own ability to not get hurt, to sidestep all of this other, because I promise you at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, right? Where we're going, all of this, it's gonna get better and I have incredible hope, especially for the younger generation. Oh, they give me so much hope. Uh, I just love being around them and watching them talk and you know, watching them on TV and the way that they language experience versus like jobs and cash gives me hope. Right? So, anyhow, 
practice that exercise just a little bit, right? Wrap yourself up. Don't let people hurt you in that way. It'll still happen, but you have the ability to control that by wrapping your energy field within yourself. Become that solid container for yourself. That's part of me 100, is discovering how awesome you are. Right? I'm sure there's a lot of people who are like, well, he's like super egotistical. <laughs> I mean, maybe people think that, maybe I am, I don't know. <laughs> but I also have had to believe in myself when nobody else would. I've had to do that for myself. So yeah, I kind of think I'm awesome. And I've worked hard to get to that place where I believe in myself that way, that I have that level of confidence, right? Because I need that in order to go where I'm going. And I still have so much work to do on myself, but I'm aware of it and I'm doing it, right? I want you to believe in yourself in the way that I do. I really want that for you. Become the hero of your own story. Do that for yourself. I give you permission. I give you permission to want what you want in life. That was a big aha for me, a big aha. When I realized I could give myself permission to want what I actually wanted, like a career in porn, as opposed to only having access to what others saw as good and valuable, good and bad. We're evolving past that. Is it of love? or not. That's how we assess things moving forward. So practice that exercise. I promise you it'll be awesome. Stop. <laughs> Next week we'll do me 100. Oh yeah, baby. Keep that joy going. Cause again, it's all up to you. It's all right there. You can do this. All right. Believe in yourself. Wrap yourself up. Don't let others hurt you. And baby, <laughs> keep the joy going. Talk to you later. Bye.